Good morning, Cowboy Jim, uh, up here in Fort McMurray. And um, I, I did the little video um, about Glenn Beck and, and Tucker Carlson. And, and I, I just have this distinct feeling that I need to do one more YouTube video. And um, I was prayerfully thinking of God and that if he doesn't bless, there's nothing that you or I can do that will amount to that much good. It's rather a challenge. Anyways, I had the privilege and the honor uh, yesterday of attending Timberley uh, uh, Dental Clinic. And uh, I, I had been um, contending with uh, tremendous sensitivity in a couple of my molars. And uh, I thought, I can procrastinate like no one else. And I... Well, having walked on a broken leg for eight days, sensitivity, uh, well, it's not that big a deal. But anyways, <clears throat> I uh, I went and had them extricated. Oh, gee, too bad. And I know and that I would live so blessed long. Uh, probably, no, not likely. I was going to say I would probably have taken better care of myself, but I have jammed in as much living into every day that I have had the privilege and the honor of living through. And so I probably wouldn't have changed anything. Hmm, probably, probably not. And I, I, I want you to know, if you ever need a dentist here in Fort Mac, this would be, I, I have one viewer from uh, another foreign land. and But anyways, um, they are good people. A year ago, my insurance wasn't quite in place yet at work. And I uh, went and had some dental work done and I thought, this is going to be expensive. And we talked, a wonderful dentist. I'm given to understand she's moved to Calgary. And what a wonderful woman. And, and um, when we were all done, she said, uh, paid in full. She didn't charge me. And I thought, I am not used to accepting a cup of coffee from anyone without insisting upon paying for it. It's the way I was brought up. I don't think it's a pride thing. I think it's an ancestral honoring that there are those in life who take advantage in, of every situation. Others who take everything in stride, and that's what I try to do. And I remember I made a, a YouTube video when I got home a year ago, and I couldn't wrap myself around the emotion of people caring their, their kindness and so on. And, and it was... It was a challenge. Uh, I mean, truly a challenge. I, I, I know a lot of First Nations people and they show respect to their elders. And um, it's a reverential sort of thing. It's shocking. Un unbelievable, really. But I, I did the... Glenn Beck, Tucker Carlson, YouTube video this morning. And, and 
the reason I did is I I know scripture uh, fairly well, not completely. It's not possible, but fairly well. And I have studied end times prophecy, and I have studied what we potentially are facing. Um, I believe what we are facing, and I, I just wanted to give you a chance to consider the potential of our future here on earth. And and it is very difficult for people because people want to live a relaxed life. Um, in the meat industry, there is such thing as a, a goat who leads the animals uh, that are to be butchered uh, up into a higher elevation where they're killed. And when they make their way to the bottom of the uh, meat factory, let's call it, um, they come out packaged meat. Um, there's a process and so on. But that go is called the scapegoat. And that scapegoat is supposed to make his way or her way, whatever, I think a he, but not sure, to the top of the ramp um, leading uh, the beef, uh, who which incidentally follow close on the heels of the goat. And the goat is to avoid being killed by the kindness of the workers and used again and again and again to lead various herds, uh, various pens of animals up to be processed. In Jewish times, there used to be a scapegoat, and that scapegoat was the priest would lay the sin of the nation of Israel on that scapegoat, and that scapegoat was turned loose out in the wilderness, never to be seen again. Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus, the Christ, the Redeemer, for us, he is our scapegoat, where our sins are laid upon him, and he thus suffered, bled, and died on the cross. If you have a hard time with that, you're in trouble. But it's your trouble. It's your choice. People have been offered by the Creator an understanding of the future, long-term, short-term. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And I know how tough it must be for you because you don't know me necessarily. If, if you knew me, you would understand how I can speak as I do about God, the potential that there is a creator and his son who loves us. If you knew more of what I have been through, you would look anew at my extreme optimism for the future, long-term future, not short-term future, long-term. Because I am fully convinced that he, God, he, Jesus, are well able to take care of all that which I commit unto him against the day of his return. 
And I paraphrase. You have to get over that. I, I don't ever want to make a YouTube video that God does not bless. I want my words to be his words. I want my heart, my sentiment to be enhanced by his love and appreciation of you, of me. And so I don't want to just build a large YouTube channel. I don't desire to have people on the street recognize that I do YouTube stuff unless they can see that the reason I do YouTube videos, stuff I call it, is to encourage them. Um, I noticed uh, this morning that we have 12,032 views. And I know that our YouTube stuff, when Speaking of God, it's a hard sell, eh? But I'm not selling it for gain. Not personal gain, I guarantee you. But I am putting forth that in your life, there is hope. You have to determine what it is you put your hope into. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You know that I am in great part anti-religion, but I am sold out to God, and I screw up. It's my nature. It's actually yours, too. But in all those things that I have done that were less than successful, I always humble myself and pray and ask that God will find a way to touch your heart as he has touched my heart. The other day I spoke of my horse called Brown Boy in regard to a choice we make to hate and or forgive. And people are not sure whether they should accept what I say as being truth or not. And I cannot convince you it's not my job, actually, to convince you that I speak the truth. I find it rather humorous when people are, they preface a statement with, this is the truth. Well, if it is the truth, it will in itself uh, verify itself. Scripture says the truth will set you free. So I'm not worried too much about that. I am concerned about you. I, I don't want you to be like me, but I want you to have an opportunity to be a little bit attentive, aware of the potentials of this life. And thus I do my YouTube stuff. I encourage you to look for good in others. I encourage you to Go beyond yourself and care one for another. And to find a way to be at peace with yourself. I have said for many years that God is love, that God loves you and I. 
in spite of the fact that he knows where and what you and I have done, he still loves us. It's his choice, but it is unmerited favor on my part. I remember a guy, head guy, when I was in heavy equipment school, he said, uh, tomorrow morning, I want you to, uh, he had watched me for about six, eight weeks, eight weeks, run equipment and work really hard. So much so that he commented on it one day. He said, tomorrow morning, I want you to stand in front of your mirror and recite this. And he said, this is what I want you to say. I deserve every good thing that happens to me today. I looked at him and I said, do you know what I say when I stand in front of the mirror in the morning? I say, oh God, forgive me. I have so failed in all my efforts. They're like, chatter, noise, but my heart is directed to God. And I would that you understood that your heart can also, can too be directed to God, not religion, not the condemnation of denominations or weird belief systems but rather to the purity of a creator, his son, our written word. Therein is life, but it is your choice. Only you can choose what and who, in whom you place your trust. It's your choice. No one can make that for you, only you. So I encourage you, humble yourself and pray and say this simple prayer, God, forgive me. Even if you're not even sure that he exists, God, forgive me. I accept that Jesus Christ, your son, took my place upon the cross for my sins. I am so sorry for having lived the way I have. Help me to be what you want me to be. If you choose such a statement, if you choose to be more concerned about the welfare of others around you who are hurting broken than you are about your own well-being, you are learning what Jesus expressed in love in that he took our place on the cross for our sins. God bless you. I hope this is what God wanted me to say. My prayer is that it is. My prayer is that you, with some degree of objectivity, will be open enough to hear that still, small, quiet voice that speaks into your heart, that voice being the Creator's voice and His Son, that they love you, that you're worthy of that love. You didn't earn it. I didn't either. But He gave it, and I chose to accept it. You can do the same thing. It's your choice. God bless saying, God bless you. Amen and amen.